Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Christmas Day has been and gone, and here in the UK, it's Boxing Day, uh, which is the day where most Americans say, "What's what what what's that?" Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I hope you had a great time. Even though I separated from family, I had a good day. I, I, I did a couple of streams, uh, opened some prezzies, had some video calls with family. So it was good. It was good. And I'm going to do like a a, an, a year review uh, in a couple of days time. Uh, so I'm going to leave it all for that. I'll leave it all for that. But uh, yesterday was also the release date of Wonder Woman 1984. Although it came out here in the UK on the 16th of December, it hit HBO and America uh, yesterday. So I've been holding off to allow my American friends, etc., uh, the opportunity to, to watch it. And then we discussed it yesterday on Friday Night Tights. But this is my own personal uh, review. So I'm going to give like a, a generalized review, a short one. And then I'm going to go into the nooks and the crannies of it and the spoilers and stuff. So uh, the first bit, you're fine. I'll tell you when we're going to go into the spoiler section. So first and foremost, is the film any good? Uh, the answer to that is is no. Uh, the film is is pretty bad. Is is pretty darn bad. Um, I would say the only thing that saves this film from being a, an a mitigated disaster uh, is the fact that the cast, apart from Kristen Wiig, who's Kristen Wiig, she's no good. Um, we're very, we're fine. We're good. They, you know, they played their roles well enough. The acting was good enough. Uh, Chris Pine was good. Gal Gadot was good. Uh, and uh, Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Uh, he was fine. They they were all good in their, their set roles. But in terms of plot, story, development, pacing, special effects, wire work... Uh, this was this was a disaster. It was a disaster. It was all over the place. Uh, clocking in at around 2 hours and 20 minutes, 2 hours and 30 odd minutes. This film was uh, 45 minutes too long. This should have been 90 minutes in and out. It really should have. Um, the length of time was ridiculous. Uh, and it just lagged and it just dragged and lagged and was boring in so many places. Um, there wasn't that scene. In the very first Wonder Woman, we had that no man's land scene, which was uh, really compelling uh, and really set up exactly why Diana was a hero and, and what true heroicism meant to her. In this film, there was nothing like that. Uh, there was there was none of those moments. There was a moment where they're flying in a plane, and it's it just felt like it was going on forever and ever. And then they made changes to the character of Diana, in as much as they took away the sword and the shield, so she only had the lasso in this version. I think they were trying to do that for the sake of kids. Whatever. Uh, she's suddenly magic out of nowhere uh unexplained magic which was really poorly done and and as i said the the dynamic between her and Kristen wig was just poor really really poor uh the story didn't make a whole lot of sense uh as to to where it wanted to go um the bringing back, we've all seen the trailers, so this isn't a spoiler. The bringing back of, of Steve Trevor, not to be confused with Steve Rogers. Who would do that? Only a loser would do that. Uh, bringing back Steve Trevor, uh, that wasn't really explored particularly deeply. Uh, although one of the movie's best moments is between Gal Gadot and Chris Pine as they have a conversation about what's going on which i don't want to like i said i don't want to spoil at this present moment in time uh what another question which a lot of people will probably be asking is was the film woke uh we you know we'd heard some 
stories that this was going to be like a, a Trump type of business. Uh, no, it really, I, I didn't see it. Uh, I really didn't see anything particularly woke in this film at all. Uh, it was just bad. Um, that's the sad element. There was definitely uh, a massive hatred towards men. <laughs> all the men in the film are horrible apart from Chris uh, Pine. Uh, but uh, yeah, every other man is is just uh, wow, a grapist by the by the manner in which they're portrayed, uh, very very poorly indeed. And Pedro Pascal's Pedro Pascal's character again likened to Drumpf. Was it? No, no, I didn't see it. I think you really have to look. Yeah, there were certain uh, superficial elements, as in his hair. The way that he's a TV personality uh, that pushed himself into the White House. But other than that, no. Um, so so I was at least happy in that regard. I wasn't thinking, oh God, this film's woke or this, this that, and the other. No, it's just like, okay, Paddy Jenkins has a problem with men. Uh, other And uh, maybe there's a little bit of uh, superficial stuff going on with pedro pascal but that that was essentially it uh would i recommend going seeing this film uh no i mean even seeing it free you're probably gonna say wow i could i could uh, really do with that two and a half hours back but the direction was just dreadful it, it just it, it felt like um there were 15 people making this film directing this film it didn't seem to have a clear concise vision uh, that took it uh it was just hodgepodge the editing was diabolical <clears throat> uh the way the scenes just dragged and dragged and scenes that shouldn't be there were in it and uh and as you can see from this glorious picture of diana running through the desert uh yes the special effects were pretty pretty poor as well and for a movie that boasts a 200 million dollar budget I'm really inclined to ask, where's about a hundred million of this gone? Truly, I, I, I am. I, I don't. This felt like a, a very small film, uh, in studio sets. It felt like a television show, more than a big budget Hollywood movie. And as said, the story and the characters. And the pacing were just so poor. I was bored for the vast, vast majority of it. Would not <clears throat> recommend. Sorry for a minute then. I thought I wasn't recording and I just panicked. But it's okay, I am. <laughs> so with that said, uh, not a recommend. I'm now going to go into the spoiler section and flesh out some things uh, which I really didn't like about the film. Uh, and what I did like about the film. So let's go with the positives. Uh, positives were, the, again, like, as I mentioned before, the cast. Uh, there's great chemistry between Gal Gadot and Chris Pine. In actual fact, once again, because I think Chris Pine was the best thing about the first movie. I thought his charisma really shone through. Uh, Gal Gadot, don't get me wrong. She's got a lot of charisma. She's got a lot of personality. She's absolutely gorgeous. She smolders. Uh, but I think she she can't really hold that uh, massively on her own. She needs somebody charismatic to bounce off. And uh, Chris Pine proved to be the, the perfect foil, which you could clearly see because Kristen Wiig in this was dreadful. And there was nothing for Gal Gadot to really bounce off with her because Kristen Wiig was Saturday Night Live Kristen Wiig. And she was talking like current day Kristen Wiig, doing that horrible improvisation shite that she does. Uh, her character just didn't connect at all. And so whenever Gal Gadot was with somebody like Chris Pine or Pedro Pascal, people who have uh, big personalities, a lot of charisma, uh, then you could see her shine, but with Christian Wig, damp, damp squib. But the problem with the relationship between uh, Chris Pine and her, Steve Trevor and her, was it was never really explored. 
Now, here's a here's the first major spoiler. Uh, Chris, uh, Tr Steve Trevor isn't technically Steve Trevor. He is and he isn't. It's the it's the soul of Steve Trevor, but the body is not him. Uh, although we see him, that's because that's what Gal Gadot sees when she looks at him. But the the MacGuffin in this movie is a uh, Make a Wish. Uh, ball of of, of crystals uh, and you make a wish and it grants you the wish and she wished that steve was back or steve was alive and so the spirit of steve trevor went inside of a regular guy and it did like a quantum leap type of business so when he looks in the mirror he's a different person he's the body that he's uh essentially inhabiting but when we see him, we see Chris Pine because that's how Gal Gadot views him. They sleep together. And he might say, okay. But the person whose body they stole, he had no consent to give for that sex. And if this was role reversed... If it was actually the spirit of a woman going into another woman and a man having sex with her, the press would be up in arms that it was grape. They would be up in arms about it. And I guarantee you nothing's going to be said because it was a man that was graped in this. That that he didn't, he didn't give his consent, but his body was used. You know, make of that one as you will. Uh, but uh, it was it was pretty, you know. Uh, if you really thought about the situation, um, the Pedro Pascal story was bizarre. Uh, he was re he was like a failed he was like a scam artist essentially. He he, he was trying to set up a business or, or pretend that his business was bigger than it was. Essentially, doing like a Ponzi scheme. And he had heard, we don't know where from, but he'd heard about this mystical crystal cluster that gave you uh, wishes. And so when it was picked up by the museum that Diana works at, that Kristen Wiig started off at, uh, then he uh, seduces Kristen Wiig and uh, gets the stone. <clears throat> Diana and Kristen Wiig have already made wishes accidentally on the stone. Diana, of course, wishing for Steve Trevor to come back. And Kristen Wiig wished that she could be like Diana. Uh, sexy, smart, strong, all that kind of stuff. And so the, the, uh, the, the cluster granted its wish, but there's like a twist... And so it started to take Diana's powers and, and filter them into Kristen Wiig. So Kristen Wiig started to gradually get stronger and stronger, and Diana started to get weaker and weaker and more vulnerable. Um, Pedro Pascal wished that he was the crystal. And so he was now the person granting the wishes. And then he was making the decision on what payment he would take for the wish. But it's never established that there's a payment that has to be paid for the wish. Other than it was made by DC's version of Loki. That, But they, they didn't want to say Loki, obviously, because of Marvel. But this, that's who the, the, the crystal was essentially made by. So there was that part... Uh, which which wasn't and it just it, it just didn't feel particularly engaging or fun and they had a a side plot with his son uh where he he was he had visitation rights to his son by the way his son's chinese don't ask because we never see the mum it's it's that felt a bit weird it needed some sort of uh well yeah his mum's chinese or the child was adopted uh, but they try and normalize this kind of stuff. And it's just like, do we just, just give an explanation? There's, there's no reason why you shouldn't give an explanation. So then uh, Pedro starts going around the world, uh, granting world leaders and, and influential people wishes. 
and in in return taken all their stuff from them uh because they 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 asked for a wish which culminates him going to the president of the united states a, a ronald reagan uh sit-in who of course wishes for more nuclear weapons and uh becomes in essence president of the united states but he becomes his own presidency that's whatever it's, it's all bit daft um christian wig just goes around trying to be sexy and she's not and i don't mean that in a nasty way gal gadot is gorgeous look at her this is this is a goddess a literal goddess that's why she's playing the goddess diana um she's absolutely beautiful and if you want to have that dichotomy of of uh, the transfer and somebody to be like diana then you've got to have somebody that's as, as sexy and, and, and gorgeous as diana that could that you know they they take the glasses off and they undo the uh the bun and you know we we discussed this on friday night tights you, you got to be looking at somebody like a charlie's theron uh theron sorry charlie's um charlie's theron as she likes to be called um or, or somebody of that sort of ilk uh i would have said angelina jolie back in the day um maybe just a little bit i'm sorry angelina maybe just a little bit too old now uh, but but somebody of that sort of of magnitude of beauty kristen wig i'm sorry she has a very nice figure but um but a face <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to be cruel but it's, she's not a patch on diana and and so yes she's asked for all this attention and and she wants people to look at her the way they look at diana but every guy she's going past is going hey girl hey girl every one of them just comes across as a grapist and they treat them that way uh, throughout the whole movie they they treat men as if they are just absolute horrible pigs which of course um gets well it's the, it's the easy way out to 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 judge people individually and based on their own um uh, the, the the way that they behave as as an individual so it's just like ugh, men right men are garbage men are pigs whatever boring boring and uh, as much as you want females and girls to be a, a big audience this film and there's nothing wrong with that uh, men are too because because men really want to see gal gadot with a beautiful pins and gorgeous face uh in that sexy outfit just just be wonder woman and kick ass so again it's sort of it's sort of a bit of a kicking a, a birds of prey s kicking the balls to men for no reason than than stupidity um scenes like i said dragged and dragged they had a scene where they steal a plane and then gal gadot just says oh i've got invisibility powers that i can make stuff in invisible out of nowhere not explained boom we've now got an invisible plane because that's what she had in the comics terrible and they have this scene where they're just dr flying through fourth of july fireworks and looking up at the sky and i think it was meant to be like an an, an anti no man's land scene from from the first wonder woman film and it didn't feel like that it just felt boring i didn't feel as if the two were reconnecting or, or falling back in love again or whatever you wanted there was just a plane with two people sitting there going oh look at the fireworks and this scene here in the desert this this fight scene because at the beginning of the movie you got about two minutes of diana in in her outfit and the next hour nothing nothing and then you get to this scene in the desert and it goes on and on and on and on and on and it's just like please end because it wasn't enthralling it wasn't like an indiana jones again we talked about this it wasn't like an indiana jones chase scene in the in the bush like in the last crusade when they're going through the jungle and he's jumping from uh truck to truck and all that kind of stuff and it's very quick and very dynamic no nothing like that at all it was just snooze 
absolute snooze. Oh, and then she's boom back in America out of nowhere. Um, Pedro is is eating. He's chewing a cedary, but he's he's absolutely fine. He's trying his hardest to work with what he's got, but his it, the story just didn't allow him to to be much. Um, and then we have the the transformation of of Kristen Wiig into Cheetah and. It looks like my first face painting. Like the kits, the face painting kits, it looked like cat. And they just got a picture of Kristen Wiig in her makeup. It looked garbage. Absolutely garbage. But the, the biggest unexplained massive plot point of the film was the fact that all you had to do was renounce your wish. But at no point in the film did it state that if you renounce your wish, then things will go back to how they were before you had your wish. That's not even established. And you have this uh, very touching scene, and it is a touching scene, uh, where Steve's just like, you have to let go of me. You have to renounce your wish. Again, not established. And Diana's crying, and she says, I, I can't, I can't say goodbye to you. And he says, you don't have to say goodbye to me because I'm already gone. I've already died. I died in 1944 or whenever it was when the plane blew up. So it's like a very touching scene. And then she renounces the wish and then she gets mad and you see all the kind of Wonder Woman powers come back to her and she starts sprinting down the street and goes off to, to do her final fight. And that, that was cool. That looked good. Um, and felt very dynamic, but it's just like that wasn't even set up. That wasn't even set up. And so the the showdown's in like a, a an underground nuclear bunker where Pedro has managed to link up all the satellites, so he's going worldwide, uh, telling people to wish and wish, and they're asking wishes, and he's granting them, and he's getting more powerful. And, it's essentially the Riddler from Batman Forever. And uh, Diana is uh, is saying, no, 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 you need to renounce. Da, 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 da. And he's like, no, I need this. I deserve this. I need this. Uh, and she's like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everyone in the world. And then you just have this scene where everybody's just renouncing their wishes. And you're like, because... Everyone's renouncing their wishes because everyone getting what they want is causing the world to, to fall apart because Reagan wanted all the nukes. The Russians are now launching nukes. It's going to cause the end of the world. So unless they renounce their wishes, the world's going to end. And so everyone just goes, all right, then I renounce it. You know, I renounce whatever I did, whatever I got. And they'd be like, no, I understand what you're trying to do, but no offense. But people who just went, I wish for... 100 million they're gonna be like Fuck off. <laughs> i ain't giving up 100 million no way i'm gonna keep but the fact that everybody renounced the problem was that sh it's not how that should have gone down it should have gone down with uh, diana talking maxwell lord pedro pascal's character him into renouncing which he eventually does but if he renounced, then every other wish would have been negated because he was the wish stone. And so they should have played on that element because they actually made him sympathetic at the end, which again makes me think this isn't really drunk related at all. And I think there's real reaching if you want to go down that avenue. Um, uh, and so he eventually renounces so that he could be with his son and tell his son that uh he just wanted to do this because he wanted his son to be proud of him and his son's just like i just want to love you daddy i just you know i i just want your love and he's just like I, you don't have to do anything I, I i love you whatever okay so you have a, a nice little soppy ending and Kristen wig she goes back to being boring whoever she was in the film and that's two and a half hours and it's just too long too long and too dull and too boring uh it was not good it really really wasn't good there was a post-credit scene with linda carter 
who uh, turned up and made a cameo as an Amazon, uh, an Amazon that's mentioned in the film, uh, which really didn't have too much bearing other than that's why Diana has the golden eagle armor. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it um but yeah it, it's it's not it's not good it's men are just grapists um wonder woman graped a man uh <laughs> and a whole load of of terrible uh problems with the the whole wish business which just didn't make a whole lot of sense um so yeah there we go folks uh as i said not a recommend uh not good i i don't think i will find myself watching this film again uh there's nothing here to to be entertained with ouch hope you enjoyed the vid if you did do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel follow me on social media and youtube for live streaming links are in the description box down below I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.